Let us learn how to use dynamic binding variables. We're going to learn to define a dynamic binding variable, how to read from a dynamic binding variable, and how to write or set a dynamic binding variable. And henceforth, instead of calling it a dynamic binding variable, call it a parameter because that's how it's known in the record world. So how do we create a parameter? Just call make parameter. And we set the initial value of it. Let's set it to 1. If I just call this, what do I get? I get um, something that is not very helpful. It just says procedure, parameter, procedure. Not very helpful. That's the output of it. Say I want to define x to be my parameter. Finding variable. Print it out. I'm going to introduce f print printf, which just prints out whatever used. C probably familiar. With. Here I'm just printing it. If I actually went step back. I want to read from a. Here we're just printing the variable itself. Just going to print out that parameter. Now, and this prints out just the internal representation of a parameter it's implemented with function output. It's not very helpful. So now, if I want to read from a parameter, what I do is I call it. I call the parameter, I get the contents of it. See, I see a one here. Say this is the initial value. Initial value of my parameter. Printed, I see initial. Now, how do I set to um, a parameter? The way you do it is I am. Parameterize will accept a list of things. Each thing is a list of two things. First one is the variable that you want to set. Second one is the value you want to set. Say I want to set it to 99. Inside, I want to print something. I want to print, I just print f. Now I want to print the value of x, expecting value. Because I just said that parameterize sets the value inside the context. This parenthesis here. Make it a bit clean. I'm expecting to see side parameterize D99. And outside, after. Eyes, expecting the value to go back to one. Let's see if that. Okay, it works as expected. So you read it after setting it. Created the the parameter here, and if I just read it after that, I get the value that I just initialized it with. Then what I did was I set it, and then I called some code that used that variable inside that scope x is now 99 so that's all fine then after that we'll note that the variable went back to the value it had great now let's try to make it a bit fancier what we're going to do is we're going to define a function which takes no parameters right now i'm going to call this Or I'll use this after now I'm gonna write some guys now set the value to be x one. 
I'm going to increment the value, but only inside this call. X plus one, this is whatever X was, and outside the print. Again, now let me make this. This is fine. So far, it shouldn't do much, right? Now, let's call F inside this. If I call F here, what I'm expecting is to show 99, 100, and 99. Ninety-nine inside param tries. Let's call this. This f. This c. So we start with initial. Start it here. Then we call this function. Call. And inside this function call, I'm going to have this three prints. That's why I see ninety-nine, a hundred. Then it goes back to 99. Then outside here, it's still 99. Now you can see that parameterize is constraining the side effects. Any side effect only happens inside, within it. But it remains unaffected outside of it. Which is very nice. Yeah, we've seen an example. Now let's say we want to reformulate this initial pseudocode. Dynamic binding, we would have to write the code as here. Put it. Well, let's go. My example two, I just wanted to reformulate, rewrite the same example as before. We had a function. This. Oh. See? Worked fine. Test pass. So what did we do? Change this just so you can think. I run again. I think. Okay, so what did we do? Just to recap in the example. The code. First, we define a variable, x1. We have to, and I want to assume that x1 was defined with a global scope, dynamic scoping. If that's the case, you have to convert it to a parameter. Then inside, I'm reading from it, so I need to convert to a function call. Then inside the code of g, I want to set it to be 20. That's what I'm doing here. I have to have the parameterized to set x to be 20. Then when I call it, I read from it. By reading from it, I need to call it. Here, there's a converted to calling x, and then that takes care of the whole function g. Finally, just calling g, you call it. Nothing changed, and that's how you do how you would convert our running x. The next video, we're going to talk about dynamic binding to control global.